Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the third volume of the Unicorn Gundam DVD series. This includes episodes 5 and 6, and much like the previous versions, it has the same sort of menu set up, the same sort of special features, uh, the same reversible cover art. The only thing that's really different with this uh, volume is the fact that you have a clear plastic case around it instead of the black plastic case, and the fact that it's not distributed by Bandai. Uh, they ceased their U.S. distribution about a year ago, year and a half ago now. Um, maybe it was a little longer, but anyways, as a result of that, uh, people are kind of wondering what Unicorn Gundam was going to end up doing, and it turns out that Sunrise is just going to release it stateside. We have the same dub voice cast here, the same you know, options for Japanese and English audio, the same basically everything, uh, which leads me to believe that Bandai probably had already th like planned out everything for the U.S. release, and then just Sunrise picked it up and decided to you know, carry on releasing it as they were. Um, the, the, like, the, like I said, the menu design is pretty much the same. Everything here is more or less the same as what we got in the previous version, which is a good thing, I think, because I really do like the quality of this uh, U.S. release and the fact that it's a simultaneous worldwide release. Uh, that's, that's a really cool thing uh, that I don't believe any other anime has done yet. There's a couple of them where they've had it where, uh, like something with Space Dandy on Toonami now, where that came stateside actually before it went into Japan, which is weird. Um, but I don't think any other series, at least not any other series of this, like, popularity and recognizable name as Gundam has done that sort of simultaneous release in Japan and the U.S. So this covers episodes 5 and 6, like I mentioned, and I imagine that when we get episode 7, obviously it'll just be a single episode because it's the last entry into the Unicorn Gundam anime, it's also supposed to be an hour and a half long, but I imagine there'll be the same sort of thing where Sunrise will just release it stateside a lot like this volume here. But in this uh, uh, this volume, number three, we have two episodes, and they follow up directly after episode four. So if you haven't seen episode four, I'm just going to warn you, there's some stuff I'm going to talk about that's not exactly spoilerish per se, but it's going to talk about, you know, characters and, and mobile suits and events that were important in episode four. So just... Be warned there. I, I don't know if I'd call it spoilerish, but you might consider it spoilers. So just a fair warning. Um, at the end of episode 4, we saw the Banshee descend from the sky and into battle. Now, episode 5 opens with the opposite perspective. Instead of being Benajer and Riddy seeing the Unicorn Gundam descending, it's actually from the Unicorn's perspective itself. And there's sort of this whole ruse that they plan where supposedly there's this uh, training operation they're running and they're going to you know, just do a standard operation, nothing strange is going to happen, and then in the middle of it, as they're being told to divert their course because they're in airspace they're not supposed to, the Banshee launches and it says, Mission Commencing. And people are just, like, freaking out because they just dropped this, you know, new Psycho Frame mobile suit into the midst of this battle zone, and they're not supposed to do that. And so you get to see the action uh, and and the, like, capabilities of the unit, or the Banshee, rather, <laughs> uh, pretty early on in these episodes. Episode 5 is probably my single favorite episode of Unicorn Gundam. I, I'll be honest about that. I really like Unicorn Gundam as a whole, and uh, there hasn't been a bad episode in the bunch. I did mention last time that episode 4 got a little too preachy for my taste, and it was probably the weakest episode of the bunch, but still, it's leaps and bounds better than some of even the best episodes of other Gundam series. So I think that says a lot about the quality of the series over the course of the, what, th almost three years it's been running. Um, so with all that in mind... Uh, I really like the way that they take some time to develop the characters and sort of progress them as we're building up for the final act. And episode 6 definitely feels like the beginning of the end. Uh, episode 5 feels like it's sort of pushing toward that, but it's still got some stuff to wrap up from earlier on in the series. Uh, it has some more development to do with Riddy and has to like explain Audrey's uh, role in this whole conflict, if you will. We also learn a lot about um, the Vist Foundation and Anaheim and sort of what their bid and everything is. Also, uh, Noah, uh, Bright Noah comes back, and uh, he's pretty cool. And they do some cool nods to uh, the older Gundam series. There's one scene that I won't spoil exactly what happens, but uh, it's got a... It's actually, I think, in... No, it's the end of Episode 5. Um, there's a really cool little nod to some of the previous new type pilots, and, and I thought that was really nifty. The way that it, it's very subtle, and if you blink, you will miss it, but um, it, I think it was really well done. So episode five is sort of this 
you know, movement back into space where we're going to finally go head towards Laplace's box. And uh, a lot of it takes place on Earth, but at the end, you know, we're back in space. And then things escalate for a little bit right into, the, like, the transition from episode 5 into episode 6. And then they sort of calm down. And we have this whole weird, like, tension in episode 6 as we finally learn the motives of Full Frontal and the sleeves and what it is that he wants and how it is that he's trying to embody this dream of what he understands um, Shah Raznable would have wanted out of uh, something as as mysterious and powerful as Laplace's box. And then we also get Audrey's take on things and how curiously different they are on, on that uh, and the whole way that the Sleeves operation and some of the different factions within Sleeves have sort of been operating this whole time. And then you're going to see some people both on the side of the Xeon Remnants and on the Earth Federation side kind of go at it with each other and have their little spats and have their little arguments and their their debates about, you know, what's morally right, what's politically uh, justified here, what's, what's the real gain of all this. Um, and to me that was very interesting that they you know, kind of brought that back into the main uh, the main stage there, because they talked about that a lot earlier on. Uh, kind of the end of episode one, and then a lot of episode two, they talked about that, uh, like when Phil Frontal was having his little interview with Benajer there, he kind of talked about um, the privilege of being a man and all that. So in this, to kind of bring that full circle right before the, you know, the final phase of everything, I think, was was pretty good. Now, the way that episode 6 ends is is very much a cliffhanger, like a lot of the previous episodes have done, and uh, it's, I think, rather predictable where episode 6 is going to start. Like, how everything's gonna spring toward the finale there, like how we're gonna just jump right into it. But I still feel like episode 7, uh, the finale, is gonna have a lot of twists and turns, and the fact that it's an hour and a half leaves a lot of room for a lot of things to happen. So I'm glad that this series has, first of all, gotten back on track. Like I said, episode 4 wasn't bad, but it wasn't as good as the other episodes that had preceded it. And so the fact that episode 5 is such a higher quality than I think most other Gundam episodes in general, but also a higher quality than um, I think the majority of the previous episodes in this OVA, uh, was a really, uh, I don't know, refreshing thing uh, for me at least. Um, but I'm also just happy with the way that this sort of sets up for the finale. I think that's really cool. So, as I mentioned, you do have a reversible cover, and I will uh, pull that out. The front one there that you saw this whole time is uh, Audrey Benadra with the Banshee upside down on the back. Or the front, rather. And then on the back here we have the uh, the Banshee just standing, and sort of those little uh, mentions of what all the special features are like you have on all the other volumes. Now on the inside, the alternate cover is Angelo and his custom mobile suit there with the uh, sort of grappling hook arms and then you have full frontal in the background and then you have the same sort of thing on the back there. A little less interesting for the back on this one I think and I really don't like this cover art as much but it is interesting if you really like Angelo and his uh, I guess fabulous nature if you will. It's the only way I can think to describe him. Um, for being the I guess resident pretty boy for this series. He's not nearly as annoying as as a lot of other um, characters that sort of fit that mold were in previous series. They're not always bad guys in some series. I consider most of the Gundam Wing leads to be, you know, pretty boys. Uh, some of them being more whiny than others. But uh, that said, I, I like Angelo. I think he's an interesting character. He's, he's sort of that character that you love to hate just because of how um, obnoxious he is at points. Um, and just sort of how devoted he is to the, the schemes of, of sleeves. Then on the inside here we have a right stuff card, that's where I got this from, and then the disc we have the Banshee in its uh, Banshee mode with the, the Psycho Frame activated. So I'm wondering for episode 7, the last disc, because the first two volumes we had the Unicorn Gundam in Unicorn mode and then Unicorn Gundam in Destroy mode, um, this one we have the Banshee with the Psycho Frame activated. I'm wondering if for the final disc we won't have the Banshee in its Unicorn mode, or if we won't have something completely different, like the, um, uh, I forget what, the Neo Zeong, uh, mobile armor, which has just been revealed for the final episode. Or it'll be something, you know, like the Unicorn, uh, full armor, or something just completely different that we didn't expect. 
Um, but as far as the special features themselves, you do get sort of the same thing that you got in the previous volumes. Uh, recaps of episodes 5 and 6. Uh, episode 5 ending with the lyrics. Episode 4 trailer. Uh, four promo episode 4 promotional video. Episode 4 TV commercials. Episode 5 promotional videos. Episode 5 TV commercials. Uh, mobile suit and character highlights for the Shamblo, the Unicorn, and Banager, the Banshee, and Maria Cruz. Uh, mobile suit highlight for Xeon Remnants and... Then, like I said, the subtitles and, and uh, audio in both English and Japanese. Um, those previews and those sort of highlight reels, again, are just sort of... Here's a bunch of clips of the mobile suits from the series with random text thrown over top of it and just music playing in the background. They're not that exciting, um, but they are kind of cool if you want to just quick, you know, watch some mobile suits blow up and uh, have a highlight spot on the Banshee. Um... They're good for that, but, I mean, honestly, if I'm going to watch anything Unicorn-related, I'd rather just watch the whole episode itself and, uh, you know, appreciate the, the full product. So, I do like the fact that there are some actual special features included with this version. I mean, the Zeta Gundam DVDs had barely anything uh, in that regard, but these... I don't think these special features are quite as informative as a, like, mobile suit chronicling as, say, the 8th MS Team DVD box set or the Endless Waltz uh, DVDs where you had, like, a whole breakdown of the schematics of every mobile suit. And it sure was a still frame. It was just a picture of the mobile suit there. But it listed, you know, the pilot and, and the information and all that. So I kind of would have preferred something more like that. I mean, obviously you can Google it and find it online, whatever, but still it'd be kind of nice to have it there on the, the menu of the DVD as something sort of, I don't know, an old-school throwback or something like that. Or just you know, information for people who, maybe this is a first Gundam series. I mean, my first Gundam series was 8th MS Team, and this series reminds me a lot of 8th MS Team, just the way it's presented and the quality of each episode and the fact that it's running for so long. Um, it reminds me a lot of that, and I think that's part of the reason I love it so much. They're very different uh, at the same time, but there's a lot of similarities in the presentation that, that I, I think works to their advantage. And uh, so that's pretty much it for this review of Volume 3 of Unicorn Gunnam. I am very much looking forward to Episode 7 when it releases uh, later this spring, and uh, it's going to be sad to see this series come to an end, but I'm ready for the I'm ready for the finale. I mean, I'd rather have it here this year than have to wait, you know, any longer for it, and uh, this honestly could end up being... I don't know that it'll trump 8th MS Team, just because that 4th episode was kind of eh, but it'll probably end up being my second favorite Gundam of all time if this 7th episode doesn't just fall to pieces. And I really hope it doesn't. I, I'm, I'm really hoping the fact that they're taking extra time to make it an hour and a half long will make it so that's one of the best, you know, most memorable endings to a Gundam series ever. Um, and so hopefully we'll have another masterpiece on our hands here by the end of end of the spring. But that's pretty much it, and with that I will see you guys next time.